and a fire is meant for burning with a bright and working flame. So the church is meant for mission, giving glory to God's name. As we witness to the gospel, we would hold a bridge of prayer, joining hands across the nations, finding neighbors everywhere. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the unity of their Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we come to pray at Mass, doing what Jesus asked us to do. And as we come, we think about the fact that we are together and individually called by God into a friendship with God and we're called, we are meant for mission, as Tom's opening song said. We are called to take part in the life of the church in whatever way we can. Let's pray in a special way too for our country this weekend on the verge of a new presidency. And let us pray as well for our world still battling COVID. We ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you come among us as one who serves. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our friend and savior and brother. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our nurturer, the one who feeds us. You are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, you govern all things both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Samuel was sleeping in the temple of the Lord, where the, where the ark of God was. The Lord called to Samuel, who answered, Here I am. Samuel ran to Eli and said, Here I am. You called me. I didn't call you, Eli said. Go back to sleep. So he went back to sleep. Again the Lord called Samuel, who rose and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, you called me. But Eli answered, I did not call you my son, go back to sleep. At that time Samuel was not familiar with the Lord, because the Lord had not revealed anything to him yet. The Lord called Samuel again for the third time. 
Getting up and going to Eli, he said, Here I am, you called me. Then Eli understood that the Lord was calling the youth. So he said to Samuel, Go to sleep, and if you are called, reply, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. When Samuel went to sleep in his place, the Lord called and revealed his presence, calling out as before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, not permitting any word of his to be without effect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry, he put a new song into my mouth. Praise of our God. Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. In the scroll of the book, it stands written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God. Your instruction lies deep within me. Here am I, Lord. I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, brothers and sisters. The body is not for immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord is for the body. God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know what, that your bodies are members of Christ? But whoever is joined to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Avoid immorality. Every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the immoral person sins against his own body. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been purchased at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We have found the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who brings us truth and grace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. John was standing with two of his disciples. As he watched Jesus walk by, he said, Behold the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard what John said and followed Jesus. Jesus turned and saw them following him and said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and you will see. So they went and saw where Jesus was staying, and they stayed with him that day. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the two who heard John and followed Jesus. He first found his own brother Simon and told him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated Christ. 
Then he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, the son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. We have beautiful readings today. The first reading is the call of Samuel, who was intended by God to be a strong leader in the church. And in the gospel, we have the invitation and the curiosity of Andrew, which led to others following Jesus. And so Samuel is called in the first reading Andrew, in his own way, is called in the second reading, and being curious, being interested, being convinced, Andrew became a means of call for his brother Peter. So it gets us thinking, do we see our lives as a call from God, or maybe to put it another way, as an invitation from God? Think of it on this basis. God called humanity when he created us. And God called or invited each one of us in a particular year when we were born. But God has known us since before we were born. And God is aware of each one of us in a very personal way. I think to understand the idea of our being called by God, every one of us, not just those who have a religious vocation or something like that, but to be understood as people called, we have to see ourselves as people who have a relationship with a personal God. I always say, God didn't just start us off and he's not just waiting for us at the end. All along the way of our lives, God is involved with us, engaged, caringly so. And God can be prayed to. God can speak to us in a call, for instance, that we can hear, not always just with our ears, but sometimes with the ears of our heart or with the thoughts and reflections that are ours. So think of it. It's enough to say that Samuel was called in the Old Testament, Andrew was called in the New, but it's better to add in, and so are we called, and so are others called along with us. And we have to see ourselves as people called into a personal relationship with Jesus. Then we can see ourselves as instruments of Jesus as he tries to reach out to call others in some small way, perhaps, through me or through you. So this relationship with a personal God involves God's knowing our name. Think of the dream that it seems that Samuel was uh, involved in when he was trying to figure out what's going on what am I hearing I was sleeping and I heard my name called and he went to Eli and thought Eli called him but he was wrong Samuel was called by name and so we have been called by name the calls that we get from God to do this or that or to be aware of one thing or another they're not always loud and clear And so we can relate to Samuel being confused. Very often, the calls that we get in life to be Christ's own witnesses and signs, those calls are intertwined with many other things that are happening in our lives, many other voices we're hearing, things that we're reading, ideas that come into our head, tasks that we have to perform and things like that. We can be very busy we can be almost uh, drowning in words or voices clamoring for our attention. But in the midst of all that, God calls us. And our lives, 
busy as they might be, full of different sounds and calls from who knows whom, are punctuated by moments when, if we listen, we can hear, and the call at other times might be loud and clear. An example from my own life. I remember when I was in college, I was thinking about going to the seminary and testing out a call perhaps to priesthood. And I was thinking about that anyway. And then in the midst of that, which I could have mistaken for just my own daydreaming or my own thinking it up on my own, my pastor, Monsignor Timothy O'Leary, long deceased, called me one day to say, have you ever thought of becoming a priest? Have you ever thought of going to the seminary to see whether you might be called to priesthood? That was a very definite call from someone else who I trust, even now, was then speaking Christ's message to me. But it mixed with my own subtler, less sure sense that God might be calling me interiorly to follow him. Now remember, calls aren't only to priesthood and religious life. Calls can be to marriage. Calls can be to give someone a cup of water. Calls can be to speak a word of challenge or comfort to someone. Calls are of many sorts. But for me, that one particular call from a person who was God's instrument, mixed with my own sensing a somewhat vague call, and they work together, I trust, to let God speak to me and invite me when the rest is history, as they say. Answering God's call will take us to a higher level of living, but not one that's detached from ordinary life. We may be doing our same work we've always done. We may be pretty ordinary people, but if we have a sense of God's having called us, then we're gonna live life in a higher way or a deeper way, with a little more sense of what life's all about. We'll have a sense that my aim is union with God, doing what God would want. My priorities, I want to be God's priorities working in me. Sometimes I don't live up to that, but that's what I should want. Where did our call first come? Well, for most of us, we were called in a very important way at baptism, but a lot of us don't remember it. But after the fact, and even still, we can think about our baptism as a moment when God, God invited us to be friends with Jesus, in fact, sharers in Jesus's life and then to be open to whatever later calls might come. So baptism is the primary call, the foundational step, but building on top of that are other steps. For instance, what they call state in life, being married for many people, remaining single, but in a, an intentionally committed way, committed to God, becoming a religious, becoming an ordained person, whatever it might be. And those are pretty important, but the most important is the call to live out your baptism, which we share if we're in the church. So baptism foundational, a state in life beyond that. Perhaps a profession or a job would be of uh, lesser importance, but still pretty important. And then all the other things we get involved with would be of still lesser importance, but still part of the call. And our task is to make sure that whatever we take on builds well on our more primary call to live out our baptism, to be followers of Christ. Does the way in which I live my priesthood, or does the way in which I live out my assignment here at Holy Name, or does the way in which I practice this hobby, or choose to read this book or whatever it might be, does any of that build up and strengthen my answering my primary call from baptism to be a disciple of Christ? Answering any call from God 
the main one to be his disciple or others will require faith, a trust that God is standing behind us, that God is moving in front of us, that God is accompanying us through life. It's a trust in God's providence that's needed. It demands reflection if we are to answer big calls or little calls well. We're called to be people who can consider, who can listen. It calls for risk-taking sometimes and maybe separating ourselves from things that might be a little bit more familiar or comfortable. Answering God's call demands our generosity and of course our love. If a call is authentically from God, then it will always be accompanied by a promise from God that God will keep his word, that God will bring about good things from what I'm called to. When you think about the scriptural figures, Samuel, God kept his word and brought about good from the words that Samuel spoke, we're told at the end of today's first reading. If you think about Mary being called to be mother of Jesus, God took care of her. It doesn't mean that everything went easily for her. Things didn't go too easy for Samuel, if you know his whole story too. But it does mean that God brought about good and took care of us. So answering God's call means we have to be good listeners, good reflectors. We need to be attentive. We need to have the expectation that God wants to bring about good from what comes our way. We have to be people open to the guidance of the church and good other people who might be God's instruments. And we need to be reflective, peaceful, prayerful. And then what might seem like sometimes just our own ideas can be tested and they might have within them a call from God that can be uncovered as best we can tell. Yes, our call from God can sometimes be hard to fathom. Yes, our response can be imperfect, but we're all called to do our best to be answerers of God's invitation, answerers of God's call. Let me end with a question that's like what we said at the beginning. Do you see your life as a call from God? A call from God to be, first of all, through baptism, his disciple, to be someone who lives out your state in life, whatever it might be, in a holy way? And then do you see yourself called to other pursuits, some of which maybe you've had a part in choosing, but do you see them as calls from God that you answer each day with new vigor? And do you depend on God to help you to keep going in letting the invitation be well responded to and well played out? Can you think of particular moments in your life when God has called you to deeper friendship or to do something special? Maybe a time of joy or loss, achievement or need. So, do you see your life as a call from God? Can you think of moments within that when God's call and maybe your generous response has played out? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, and with the Father and the Son is, glorif is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Called as we are, together at baptism, but individually in the particularities of our own lives. We know that God is involved in our lives, and so we can pray to him. And now we raise these intentions that we know our needs in our world today. For us, the church, that we may introduce others to Christ through virtuous lives, loving deeds, and truthful words, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of our country, as we inaugurate a new president this week, may there be integrity and wisdom in all of his decisions and respect and peace among all Americans. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are discerning their life's calling, that they, like Samuel, may say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening and offer their gifts and talents for the glory of God and the service of others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a successful vaccination program, that God will make effective the available vaccines, guide those distributing and administering them, and open pathways for their distribution in poor communities and nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are ill, in hospital or at home, because of the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased of our parish and for all who have died in recent natural disasters around the world, that God will call their names and welcome them into eternal joy and peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have called us to be your people, first of all, and you have called each of us in different ways to use your gifts for good. May we always be people ready to say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And may we be ones who can say, here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. May your help for us to answer your calls be constant, and may we count on it, and may we do well in seeking to be united with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Where there is hatred, let me bring you
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You love the human race, and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, Jesus took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and gave you thanks, Father, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth this paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened, 
make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, spouse of Mary, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. From the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the earth, now and ever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. No, but here's the here. Now let us offer each other a sign the peace of Christ. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Shepherd of souls, refresh and bless your chosen pilgrim flock. With manna in the wilderness, with water from the rock. We would not live by bread alone, but by your word of grace, in strength of which we travel on to our abiding place. Be known to us in breaking bread, but do not then depart. Save your abide with us 
and spread your table in our heart. Lord, sup with us in love divine, your body and your blood, that living bread, that heavenly wine, be our immortal food. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thanks for being with us for our Mass today. It's great to be able to have a Mass over the airwaves, even if we have to make the prudential decision, as many of you have made, not to come into the church for reasons of safety and health. I respect that. We're grateful to Tom Mangum, our director of music, for once again linking up the readings and the songs so well. And I'm also grateful to Jim Flanagan, who read our first reading and is our videographer. He is our youth minister here at Holy Name. And I'm also grateful to Maureen Connell, who read our second reading. She's our pastoral associate, and she directs the lower grades of religious education. The month of January, we've given over to collecting for the poor uh, used coats and also new socks. I got a big delivery of socks in the mail, and I couldn't figure out who had sent me all those socks and I couldn't figure out how I would ever wear them over the days of the rest of my life, then I realized they weren't for me personally. They were for the sock collection. And so I've put them where I should put them, ready to be brought by our, some, some of our parishioners to downtown Boston to be given out. And so we're grateful for the response to that. Please, too, know that we're grateful for all the good that you do for our parish praying for it, taking part in it as best you can during these strange days, and also supporting our parish financially. It's really making a difference. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks Amen. be to God. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be, with God as our Father. We are family. Let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth.